Welcome everybody uh, to the art workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. Thank you for tuning in today here on Pike TV. We have a new episode today that is going to be really fun. It's going to be something that you can I hopefully enjoy but learn a lot from. We're going to be using a really interesting medium today. Um, one that we have never used going on 80 episodes or so of this show being recorded over the course of the last few years and never not one time have we used oil. That's right, oil. If you're from Eastern Kentucky, it's absolutely oil. It's not oil. I can't say that, I'm sorry. But you know it's oil because uh, it's oil, right? Uh, so anyway, today on the show, oil. Oil painting, very hard medium. It's a medium that is one that you really have to get used to. It's one that takes time. It's one that you have to really think about the application because you're working with a few different elements here. You're working with, um, of course, the pigment itself, which is oil-based. You also need something that's going to dilute it a little bit because the paint is just too uh, condensed and too, too, too dense, I guess you could say, um, to work and use, get opaque, nice ranges of tone with, without this um, 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 medium that you add to it, basically. Now, there's a few options with that. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but this also requires us to mix paint with a, um, um, a small device here that we're going to pull out and then apply that to our palette. And then all of those things together should technically allow us to use oil. But the cleanup process is also something we'll talk about because that's important. It's one that really discourages a lot of artists, especially young artists, from using oil because oil will uh, take so many moving parts to work, right? But in today's show, I'm going to go over those moving parts with you, and hopefully after today, you're going to feel more confident about using it, and hopefully you will. Uh, the thing we're going to draw today is going to be really super simple and straightforward. Now, this is my canvas. I've already applied to that um, everything that I need to make it ready to paint on, all right? And um, this is just a, basically a um, dry medium now, but before, I had to put a medium over top of this, an artist medium, which is basically like a white paint um, that we use to coat it so that it can accept the oil. See, that's one step. That's the first thing usually that discourages artists is that step. Now, they do make preconditioned um, frames that you can get. You can get um, different boards that you don't have to apply this to. Um, but, you know, in this case, I had to because this is a traditional uh, frame that we're using, okay? All right, so let's go over real fast what we're working with today. We have our palette. That's just a metal palette, which we'll mix our paint on. We also have, of course, um, the mixing tool here. This is just a little tiny spade tipped um, mixer. Um, has been so, so, so resourceful for me over the years. Of course, we have brushes too. I've got a couple of those I'm gonna pull out. I'm only using three different types. Um, Small, medium, and large, you could say, when it comes to this. Of course, you need your paint, which is over here. Now, this is a set of Winsor Newton. Winsor Newton is a brand. This is a pretty, not super high-end expensive, but it's, it's up there on it. And uh, you have to forgive me. I just realized I've wrote notes on my hand. Uh, but <laughs> this, is a, this is a kind of expensive brand, not super expensive, but it's not one you want to go out and buy in order to get started like you've never used it before. Um, this is a set, though, that you is an example of one. We're not endorsing anything, but this is perfect, though, to get started. You notice you have your brush, your pencil, your eraser. You have your uh, paints here that you can get, plus prefabricated canvas top material you can paint on. And then here's the big one, one we haven't talked about yet, one that we need to talk about, the mixing agent. Now, terpenoid. Terpenoid is dangerous. It can kill you if you eat it. You don't want to consume it. You don't want to get it near your eyes. You don't want to inhale it. It's very, very, very toxic. Why this is in a set for ages 12 to adult, this should be probably adult and up, right? Um, I don't know, but it is because that's used to before uh, they started coming out with things like Gamsol. That's all you had. Now, Gamsol is great. It's odorless, number one. It is also basically made up of mineral spirits, which is, uh, that's a positive. It's not as toxic to the environment as your terpenoid. Um, however, this is combustible, harmful or fatal if swallowed. So, as you can see, there's a lot of deterrence from using oil, but it's such a fun medium. I've really been so in, uh, just happy to get involved with this because I didn't like it either before a few months ago. So there you go, right? So let's get started. Now I need you to grab a pencil out. 
Of course, you probably don't have access to oil, but if you do have access to oil, that's great. Uh, this is more of a, um, um, I guess, an introductory type of episode so that you can get involved with oil painting, but you can draw along with me on the first steps in setting this up. If you do not have oil, that's okay. If you don't have oil, you can use acrylic to the best you can. Of course, you leave out certain steps like mixing the gamsole and things, but you can follow up to a certain point, even with, oil, with acrylic, watercolor, and even also with even uh, colored pencils because we're going to be using what's called monochromatic today. Monochromatic, and you'll go ahead and draw with me if you don't mind as I'm talking, okay? I'm going to place an oval right about here. Monochromatic, well, that is just a big fancy word for using one color alone. So we're not using two colors. We're using only one. We're using one color to put this all together with, okay? Now, the reason I'm not going to use a ton of different colors here today is really because of time. Now, oil does require you to take time, um, and it's going to require all these little steps. And the thing about it is, whenever you change color with oil, let's go from yellow to blue or something like that, that means you repeat that process again. So you have to clean the brush, you have to clean your palette. It's a lot of steps involved. I don't mean to say all this to discourage folks from using oil, I think oil is really fun to use, um, and you know you get some really interesting effects from it. The probably the biggest benefit from using oil is that it allows you to come back and work your painting over and over, uh, over the course of uh, of a few days. Even the paint takes a while to dry, so you have access to go in and redo, touch up, make changes to certain areas as much as you like. All right, now if you haven't noticed, I've drawn something here that hopefully looks like a cup. I can tell you already that my edge up here is a little off. Uh, I'll get my eraser here and try to straighten that up. Now the thing about after you've applied this uh, dry artist medium to your canvas is that it's kind of hard to go back over and erase and things like that. Now this drawing isn't supposed to be a perfect drawing because the drawing is going to be covered up by paint. Uh, however, we do want to get at least an idea of what the shape of this is before we start painting. Um, that helps us because we're applying our, our under drawing, of course, now. And when we apply the paint in a little bit, that will be our um, actual um, point of, you know, the art, right, is the paint. So... Hopefully, this all comes together and works out. Now, I chose still life today, uh, still life being that it is something that you set up on a table and look at and draw, right? Instead of, let's say, doing something from uh, um, an artist, you know, a, uh, like an artist interpretation of an environmental scene or drawing a character. Still life is setting up things around the house and then uh, painting, drawing them, right? So that's what we're doing now. We're setting up our elements that we need. Now watch what I do here. I drop down at the bottom and I'm going to put a shadow out back here like that. So I'm drawing in my shadow. I'll be painting over this though, but I'm drawing it in first. A little bit of shadow there. There we go. Now to the point of actually mixing things. I'm going to get my palette out here and for the purpose of this I'm going to be using um, uh, fallow blue which is a very deep blue color I'm going to be using just a little bit of that now here's what you need to do when you mix this watch what happens I'm going to place a dab here and a dab here now watch what happens as I'm applying this onto my palette I'm using less and less of the color see that as you go down and what I want to do is mix this with white so now I'm going to pull my white out. I'm going to put a dab here, just like I did with the blue. I'm basically going to give equal distribution of white and blue onto the palette, just like that. And once I've done that, I get to pull out the gamsol. Now usually I have a dropper in the shop that I use dropper allows you to pull some out but we don't have it here with us so we're going to pour some hopefully not spilling it too bad at least here 
So I'm going to put a couple of uh, little ports here filled with the Gamsol. There we go. Set that down. Now the first thing I do before I start painting is I prep my materials. That's what I'm doing now. Now as you can see these sets come in all sorts of ranges of color. They give you your primary colors. Now I'm pulling some of this Gamsol out and I'm laying it down on top of each little dab of blue. Okay. Just a drop or two on each one. Doing the same thing with the white now. And you notice I'm starting now to carry a little bit of that blue color even on the tip of my um, blade here. And it's starting to mix with the white. So now I'm going to mix this together here. Pulling a little blue from this little tiny section here. Now there, this is the first section I want to mix thoroughly. And as you start to mix this mineral with it, it makes the oil start to become a little less thick. It makes it so that it's a little bit more malleable. And you should get a nice, nice sky, deep sky blue here. Now you have two options at this point, and that's why I went ahead and made these sections out for you to see. You could go down the line and mix each one of these right across, but what I'm going to do first is come here on the back of this white, and I'm going to mix this color that I just mixed in with it. So now this will be a little bit lighter, you'll see it. Now monochromatic, you're using one color, and it gets, should get lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes, because we're going to be using the lighter version for our highlights, and we're going to be using the darker version for our shadows. Now we're going to mix this one as well, pulling a little more Gimsol in there. There we go. Now you can start to see that it's really starting to pull that blue into the white. And the very last one should come very close to the true white there. Pretty close anyway. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be pretty close. There we go. Mix that up really good. Now I'm going to use those blues that I have in a little while because you continually mix until you get to the right elements that you want. Now the goal is to eventually go from, if you can imagine in your head, this blue here to that dark blue on our canvas in terms of shadow. Now once you've mixed it, I like to grab a little bit more of the Gamsol and go, go right across the entire palette mixing some of that in. Now, there we go. That should keep your oil nice and ready and primed to go. And I'm going to take my blade and wipe it off. Lay that off to the side. A rag is very important. So now I'm going to start with a wider brush. Let's we'll start with this one. I'm going to load it up with some of that gam soil. And I'm going to actually, I forgot to go ahead and put a little bit of white to the side here to pull from. You need, um, when you're working mixing with monochromatic colors, you need to have yourself a reservoir of white, especially um, on ones that you have a lot of shadow, your, your subject has a lot of shadow, uh, because you're going to pull from this white every now and then. And when I say pull, that just means basically load up a little more white with your color so that it mixes well, right? Um, you can you consistently notice that the palette is being worked with. I'm consistently pulling paint from the palette, going over to my canvas, applying paint onto my canvas. So what I want to do is make sure that I keep a consistency in the lightness of this. So the first step in this really is to all the areas that you want to apply a light color to is the color or the areas, excuse me, that that has the less amount of shadow, right? So it's easy to go from light to dark with the medium. It's harder to go from dark to light. Oil is an exception, of course. Like I said, you can rework it over and over. But in order to save yourself a lot of time down the road, go ahead by starting out light to dark. It will help you to really kind of keep, a, keep tabs on, you know, how much work you have on the other end of things once you finish because it's really hard to go back and you finished a drawing or a painting, noticed an area that you probably should have reworked a little more, but you didn't. And it's a little easier to go back and ch make changes uh, once you've thought out each step of your, 
of your uh, drawing to begin with from the initial get-go. Now this is shadow, of course, what I'm working on now. So the back of the cup here. But I'm going to go ahead and put some paint on there, this lighter color at first. It'll prime it a little bit. And now I'm just going to keep adding paint until I fill up the entire surface of my canvas. This is important because the way oil works is a lot like watercolor because as you're applying the paint down, you are actually giving yourself an, a, a um, range to work off of. What I mean by that is, you know, you're putting pigment down on the canvas. So when you go back over in a little while, as you go darker and darker and darker, you're adding to what's already there and having something there to begin with helps you to blend, make changes if needed, so on and so forth. Okay, getting up to the edge now of my cup. You're going to start to see a little bit of the um, graphite start to be pulled up with the gamsaw. That's okay. Now out here in the back part, be much darker going down this way. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we start out a little bit darker in this area here. Monochromatic is a fun way to get used to color because you are limiting yourself how much color you have to use. If this was a full-blown oil painting, of course we'd want to implement as many colors as we possibly could, um, but we need to understand how those colors work before we can, right? Now this is a rudimentary type of exercise. It's one that anyone can really get involved with. So if you are interested in getting involved with oil painting, a good step is monochromatic first. What I'm going to do is add some paint to the surface of my canvas right now. I'm going to change brushes in a second, go from this thicker brush to a little bit thinner brush for fine detail. You'll notice that it's picking up again on that graphite. That's okay. Sometimes what artists will do is they will erase all the pencil lines before they get started with actually putting in the color. I like to leave it so you can see it, number one. And number two, it really doesn't matter because the, when you work your, your canvas um, by adding more and more paint to it, eventually what happens is all those pencil lines just sort of get over, overrun by the paint. Now I've just added colors all I've done. I've not tried to think about composition in terms of uh, where my shadow is or how to show that so much, but I just wanted to add color. What I'll do now is I would clean my brush out, of course, if I was in the shop, I would go over and run some more minerals over it, clean it out with rag, but this will do for now. And I'm gonna pull this little thinner brush out. And now I'm gonna to start to really put in some, some details. I'm gonna start out with the white. I'm gonna use almost pure white here. and go over the rim of the cup, right around the rim here. Now when you're thinking about um, shadow and light, a good rule of thumb is that you have to first establish a light source. Where's your light coming from? Once you've done that, then apply all the areas light first that you want light. And then from there, what you do is go back in and you start to work those darker areas. So again, going dark to, I mean, light to dark. Right around here. I'm going to be very careful here. Even if I talk, when you get in those little tiny areas that's, that's super, super, super detailed, you want to almost inhale and hold your breath because it requires a very steady hand to go over those areas. Starting to add some shadow. You're going to start to see now that the cup is starting to form a little bit better now. Now I want to be really careful here because adding too much blue will start to take all of my light away. 
Now I want blue there though. It's not that I don't want any blue there. It's, it, we have to have blue here, but I'll go back and rework the areas needed by adding a little bit more light in there. All right, now we're going to drop down a little bit, load a little more Gamsaw, lighten this just a little bit at the bottom here. Now I'll go down in this direction, on this side here. Just a little bit of darkness there. There we go. Pulling the color towards me. You can see how that starts to form the edge of the cup a little better. Down towards the bottom. Underneath our handle here. Now the handle comes over, of course, and connects to the the cup at the top and I don't want to go too dark uh, you know I have a I have a tendency myself of wanting I know where the shadow is I know where the shadow is going to be here so a part of me just wants to go in and just put a ton of paint in there but I have to restrain myself from doing that but I want to really bad now we'll go down the handle this direction Now, as you play around with oil-based paint, you're going to find that you get a little bit more comfortable with applying certain shapes with the brush. So a part of this, too, is not just learning how color works together, combining certain colors, and the color wheel, and what happens when you mix this or that. But you also find that you have to also become very comfortable with how a brush works. And I'm used to a pen, so I paint a lot with um, watercolor, but I draw a lot more, though, in, in my work than anything else. So I'm comfortable with the brush to an extent. I mean, I'm comfortable with, I'm comfortable with uh, loading medium up on my brush and, and going in here and putting it down, but oil works so much different. The feel of the uh, pigment on the, on the brush itself is different. You get a whole different uh, world when you start entering into oil-based painting. Now, there's some absolute masters that you'll find. You can search for them online um, that, that have just really just grasped this medium and ran with it. I, I look at some of their work and it's just, to me, unbelievable. I don't know how they do it, but you know, I know I could, I, I could never get as good as them. Maybe I could if I but you'd have to paint every day, I imagine. Like every day of your life, you'd have to work on it. I don't see how in the world uh, anyone couldn't uh, or could get as well, you know, become as, as equipped as they are with this medium without painting every day of their life, literally. So I'm adding a little more paint. Now what I want to do now is you notice that it's starting to shape up a little bit, but I'm going to clean my brush out. I'm going to grab... And I did that because with oil, the pigment gets in those hairs of the brush to a degree that you, you know, it, you, you start to work on an area and you clean your brush out like you normally would with watercolor or something. And you go in and the next thing you know, you clean your brush out and you think you're good to go. And then you start to apply paint to an area and you realize, oh my goodness, this, is, this isn't white. This is as dark as the uh, previous colors I was using. And that's because oil just has a way of getting into those fibers. And so I like to just clean my brush out all together and start over when I have it, when I start a new section. Because even though you're, you're moving along, you're, you're painting, everything's going just fine. Um, all the whole time you're doing that, your brush is getting loaded up with paint and uh, it can really mess with things down the road. A little bit of shadow over here on this side, coming down the edge, around the brim of the cup. Right there. Now, I keep looking up at the screen because I noticed that even with the changes of uh, what this looks like in person, looking at it digitally, it, it's different. So I'm trying to keep in mind the changes that I need to make so you can see at home what I'm talking about. So see here on this edge, here, to me, it's dark enough, but 
for you at home, you may not be able to see this as well. So I'm going to darken it in more so you're able to. Pull some white now at the edge of this. Right as you get the edge, the penumbra of your shadow. So just like with science, um, astronomy, you have um, different edges and shapes that are created whenever light is blocked by mass. And that's no different when it comes to your, um, with painting. Um, if you're trying to paint something that looks realistic, then you want to try to you know, understand how does, how does this work in reality? And what would this look like if this was a picture of this cup sitting here instead of a painting? And our goal is to get as close to that as we can, at least with the time we have today. So I'm gonna to try to be quiet for a second. That's hard for me. And I'll apply this white right here going around the edge without making it too thick. There we go. There we go. Starting to shape up a little bit more. I'm going to pull a little bit of color coming off from the cup going down in this direction. I'm going to add a little bit more too here. Around the edge going this way. And around this way. I love to look at a painting in person. Um, if you ever get a chance to go see artwork, like actually hanging um, up somewhere in a gallery setting, um, I know UPAC has a, a great um, gallery, the Weber Gallery, that you could go and visit on occasions. Hopefully when things lighten up with restrictions one day, if they do, I'm hoping they do, we all are. Um, I really highly suggest you go out and see what's available to you in terms of the art in the public public spaces because seeing art in person it really gives you the sense of what the artist did to create that and how much time goes into it because art is time consuming um, it's it, it takes a lot of time to construct a well done piece of art now what we're doing here at the art workshop is the basics of things to help you get started that's the goal. Um, as for finished pieces of work though, you really should go see art in person if you haven't already. There are some amazing artists in our region and I, I just, I'm blown away when I see work in person. Because what you see that you don't see here, or you can a little bit maybe, but you don't really see all the pigment lines and marks on canvas the raised portions where the brush was applied, you know, the downward strokes that maybe an artist used to get a certain effect. Um, you don't see that on, on film or digital. So you can, of course, you can zoom in really, really close, but go over it. But, but standing there in person, you get a sense of scale. You get a, a sense of, uh, you know, the, maybe even the, what the artist was, of course you can't imagine what they were thinking, but you can in a little bit because you know, you might ask yourself, why did they decide to use this as their focus point for this medium? Why did they decide to use a cup as their, you know, subject? And of course, those questions aren't, aren't always answered, but, but when you ask yourself questions about art, when you look at it, it helps you to understand a little bit better about what it would mean to create your own piece, what decisions you would have to make, what questions you'd have to ask yourself, so not only are you getting involved with maybe um, learning a new medium to work with, but you're also getting involved with thinking about art differently than just that's pretty or that's not pretty, right? And for me, I'm learning all the time. Like I get to the point with art sometimes where I will look at a piece and forget exactly what it is that, you know, <laughs> I originally thought of it when I looked at it because I'm looking so much into the detail about how or imagining how the artist made it. I love to think about that. I love to see a work and dissect it, become almost like a, you know, an, an investigator trying to solve a puzzle. For me, that's one of the, one of the best things about art. All right, we're getting ready to draw to a little bit of a close here. Uh, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of time here and I'm going to 
paint and you watch me and you can kind of see how I use the uh, the shadows and the light in this monochromatic setting to pull out some of the shapes and things. At the very end we'll talk just a second longer about oil and then we'll say goodbye for now. All right, so basically what we've done is added light using monochromatic elements. So that's one color again. And I think we've done an okay job with the time that we have to do this in. So we don't have a whole lot of time to put paintings together. But I think what, you know, for the most part of what we were trying to shoot for, it's really come out. Now I want to share something here at the end with you. So notice what I've done though. I've had breaks in light to dark and showing the side of this cup here even though that's in mostly shadow you notice there's a white line going up and down here right so just including so there's two areas this is really you can see this in including that white line from the shadows so technically this side of the cup has, has shadow because the shadows back here so the light source is coming down from this direction now that little break in color there so dark light dark even though that's not necessary because it's technically in shadow it helps to show the edge and the form of your composition composition meaning what is your painting made up of same as right here around the handle so this handle technically doesn't need to have that white line going down it the shadow is on the edge of this this is this is uh, all dark but having that white line that space helps to show the form of the subject now what last thing I want to do is right down here in the middle of the cup I'm going to put some very dark very dark paint because I want to seem as if there's actually stuff in the cup here. So we're going to actually like imagine that there's coffee in this cup or maybe tea or something like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the form of the cup around. Now there's going to be light reflecting here because as you can see, as we get further in this direction, we see the light reflecting off the back of the cup here, right? So, so we have shadow down here. So we would need to have a little bit of light down there in whatever this is. So instead of painting this entire thing dark, which, which you could do, I'm going to include a break in the color right there. So that again, the shadow seems more pronounced or more, you know, more established, right? So the form of the cup again is being shown by the choice of what colors I'm using to show shadow. So right here, a break in that, right across there, a little bit there. See that? So that is not completely darkened in. There's still a little bit of light coming through. Now with oil-based paint, you have to allow this time to dry, of course. You can seal it with a coat of a clear sealer, some sort of polyurethane or some sort of casting uh, like spray resin. And always sign your work. That's something that I always stress. Put my initials down here at the bottom. Um, so you know when you did it, right? Or who did it and when. There we go. And so I think for the most part there, a cup is done. Now, if you followed along today, maybe in watercolor, I'd love to see what you did. Um, the cleanup process, though, for watercolor is a lot different, of course, than oil. You can see the palette here, just how messy it was. Um, but this, of course, will be taken, and then we will readjust it and uh, uh, clean it out and get ready for the next painting, right? But if you did follow along, we'd love to see it. You can send it to us an example at piketv99 at gmail.com. And we'll share that with, uh, the, on, with the audience on the next show. And we'd love to see it. So please send it in if you have uh, followed along. So oil-based paint is fun. Yes, it takes time and a lot of materials and steps to get to the point where you actually use it. But once you do it, it's so rewarding because you can keep going back and making changes even on this canvas tomorrow. So thank you all for participating. I'm so happy to be able to bring the show to you along with the folks here at Pike TV, the great production team. Um, we, uh, we're just honored to be able to do this. 
So until next time, I'm Christopher Epling on behalf of Pike TV. Uh, keep drawing.